When someone in your family needs a transplant to survive, you'd climb mountains, cross oceans to save that life. This story is about a family that searched for years, and just when it looked like all was lost, they found a Motown miracle. This story begins 4,000 miles across the Atlantic in 1993. Near London, a six-year-old boy had been suffering from what everyone thought was the flu. But the diagnosis proved much more serious, life-threatening. A doctor knocked on the door at his house outside London, telling his mother, little Daniel DeGale had acute lymphoblastic leukemia. I think I just fell to the ground. I just couldn't believe it. By age eight, doctors knew the only way Daniel would survive was a bone marrow transplant. But no one in his family, in fact, no one in all of the United Kingdom was a match. Not that year, or the next, or the next, or the next. There was at that time 580 black people on the register. Six years after his diagnosis, Daniel's body is so weak, he can't take much more chemotherapy. The phone rings, the doctor. And then he just said, Bev, we found Daniel a match. And I was, you found Daniel a match? I said, are you sure? He said, yes. I said, where, where are they? Are they in this country? He said, no, they're actually in the United States. They always wonder, who was it? Where was the match, this angel saving their son's life? The match was an ocean away right here in Metro Detroit, working in the city's main post office. A 50-year-old woman, Doreen Carney, who on a whim volunteered to be on the bone registry. So I really wasn't thinking that in less than a year I was going to get the call from the Red Cross. But she did. Doreen was Daniel's perfect match. Under general anesthesia, the marrow is taken from Doreen's hip bone. When she comes to, it hits her. Within 24 hours, that young boy was going to have my marrow. Months later, she would hear the patient is doing well and thought, I just cried and um, just thought how awesome. <laughs> Five years go by. Then, just last Christmas, Doreen's phone rings. A British accent. Daniel's family. He was finally healthy, and the family wanted to call the mystery hero who saved his life. I think I cried, I, I laughed, I might have shouted in his ear. I just completely lost it. I just kept saying, oh, God is so good, God is so good. Last month, Daniel and his family flew to Detroit to meet Doreen, who was excited. <laughs> and so nervous. <laughs> I tried to calm down all day. It didn't work. She makes her way to the family's hotel room in Dearborn. Inside, the family's nervous. My mind's blank. It's just anxiety now. so close now, it's feel like we've known each other for ages already, it's just like we've been family, we've met each other millions of times before, but really it's the first time. But it isn't over. Doreen takes the family on a whirlwind tour of Detroit, including the Motown Museum. Stop in the name of love. A trip they'll never forget. My girl. My girl. My girl. <laughs> Doreen and Daniel's family say they're now related for life. She's like an auntie. I mean, I call her Auntie Dora now. She is our knight in shining armor. She has given back to our family something that myself and um, Daniel's father, as much as we gave birth to him, we couldn't, we couldn't give him. And for that, we are so grateful. This story continues. Daniel's family started a charity to increase the number of minority donors on the registry. And next month, Doreen is going to London as the guest of honor at that charity's annual dinner. Daniel, by the way, is now a star student in college, very involved in spreading the word about organ donation. If you'd like to give the gift, go to our website, clickondetroit.com. Lila Lazarus, Local First.